So just like all the elements we have in the yard here, the, the dog stand, the um, dog blind, us laying down in the um, layout blind, the decoys, I think whatever whatever you're hunting, you know, take the day before and go through everything and socialize them to it again for, for safety like this and, and just make sure the, the dog's ready for it for the next day. And that's what, you know, it's cool that we can sit here and Ryder's just, you know, he wants to go get that, that real bird bad right now and he's staying steady and I think that as a as a hunter with a dog and you know us working with you and a couple other trainers across the country it, we want to make sure that the viewers out there and that our followers and the guys that are paying attention to what we're saying understand preseason preparation whether it's nutrition diet the health part of the dog getting him in shape making sure that if he's going to come on one of these South Dakota North Dakota early season goose hunts you know the temperatures that he's going to be running in oh definitely you know everybody says well um, it's summertime here comes whether it's dove season or um, you know early early fall goose season, you know the dogs are the dogs are out of shape for the summer and they go out there and they wonder why they're not performing. Well, it's just like a professional athlete. These dogs they have to have the exercise. Ryder say if he he's not fat, but this same dog could look the same way if he's been laying on the couch all summer, set, but. You want his lungs, just like you or I, if we we're going out to play racquetball or, or, or run run laps, we want to be in shape where we can perform and our lungs can perform. And if not, you know, he's going to get exerted and, um, you know, you, you can go into heat strokes and stuff like that. Big time. And, the, of course, just like you said, you know, the water and uh, making sure that you have him plenty hydrated and make sure he doesn't overheat. I always find it interesting when you start talking about dry field hunting with labs and I've seen some really good ones guys that I've hunted with in the past and then I've seen some that you know you wonder about what would you tell a guy getting into it if he's going to start running the dry field cornfield hunt do you want it on the end do you want it right next to his handler do you want it back a little bit as far as the hearing protection goes for the dog what would you say to all that well you, you hit some key points there you know um, we definitely want safety for the dog and safety for um, our shooters um, that's that's priority so um, what I would definitely do is always on the end. It doesn't matter which, which end, right or left end of your shooters. And um, I wouldn't remote sit him because then he's out of the peripheral of the handler. So I, I like it on the end and the, of course the handler right next to him and bring it back. Another thing that, um, you know, the, the hearing loss of a dog, if you, if you hunt like this a lot and the muzzle blast is right there in his ear over and over and over, it's gonna, it's gonna reduce his hearing. So we, we want to make sure the dog, we want to make sure he's good and steady, you know, um, do a little bit of, you know, um, throw the bumper, make sure that he's not going to blast out of that mutt hut. A lot of them, even you, even if you have a good steady dog, you put them in that mutt hut and they want to um, come out of there pretty fast. Right. And, and when I say get him, if that dog goes, when I say get him and he's not trained the right way, now all of a sudden you might have three or four geese landing in the decoys and these guys' his barrels are low gunning for those geese and he, and he becomes right in harm's way. And that's what I always worry about is that in these dry land situations, they have to be trained so well they cannot break. They just can't. And I've seen it so many times where as soon as I say get them, the guns come up and they're firing. That dog's already out there looking up in the air for geese falling or ducks falling. Hill, the dryland field, you know, um, they're conservationist tools. You know, they, they, they recover our wounded birds. You know, everybody, it makes sense on the water. But how many times have you shot that wounded goose and he lands out there 100 yards? Hill, and he's, he's running off with a broke wing. And if we don't have a wheeler there, you know, we're not catching up with him and he's going to get away and then he's going to spoil the hunt for our adjoining properties and then we get a bad name for ourselves and um, that, that's, and that's, def an, that's an definitely situation. what we know. Yeah, exactly. And, and to add to that, here's something that's real simple is that you, with the popularity of dry land corn hunting for mallards, you put three or four mojos out and you get a wad of four or five hundred mallards working at once. You got five yep. guns going after them and gunning them you think that you're going to remember where all you know eight oh, or no, ten birds sure. fall you go out there and you pick up three and then it's a search party for the other mallards because they blend into the natural colors of the earth they they might not they might be deader than a doornail and not crippled and not moving at all and you have a hard time finding you might kill a hen where you're never going to see her on a you know a, a exactly. dirt a dirt cornfield exactly um you know the it, like I say, he's got to be on the end, he's got to be back, and even if he's not out there in front, you, you can one shot right by his ear. Yes. So um, the, the, the steadiness of the dog out of the mutt hut is just as, imp I mean, that's the, that's the key thing. But just like right here, sit. 
he's steady right here in the yard, but when we put him in the um, dog blind, is he gonna is he gonna be steady? So here's a perfect situation scenario right here. You're coming out, that muzzle is literally this way, 18 inches from him, and the end of that muzzle is another 14 inches from his nose. So one shot right there has, you know, that has the potential to even be dangerous right there. You might even want to move him back a little bit more. Exactly. How far do you think is the right distance? Th this is pretty good, you know, uh, maybe a touch back, but um, what I really wanted to do is demonstrate how, how quick it can happen. I'm gonna set Ryder up to come blowing out of there. I'm gonna give him a hey, hey, that means his fun command. But I just wanna show you, you know, we got an unloaded gun, but how close, how close he would be. Hop up, hop up. Well, Ryder, he, he's doing his job, but you see, I mean, if he would've blew out like, and you know, he, he knew it was a hey, hey, and it was fun, but even as good as he is, he popped out, and you see him pop out, and I didn't say his name, he, he was gonna yeah. go back in and for And you it. might be squeezing the trigger at the same what if time. Been, he's, it's over. Yeah, it's over. And I mean, um, lifelong companion for, for someone and then and it happens you hear about it all the time i've heard a lot of the hunting accidents that happen with with the hunter and with the, the dog and it just you it'll ruin your hunting career it'll ruin the memory of it and you just don't want to take a chance of that come here right good dog come here that dog fetch up i knew there were going to be a bunch of people in the blind and a bunch of people we were set a bunch of people we were hunting with so i definitely want Ryder to know it's the only time to go when it's his name. So sit. Stuart, Chad, Johnny, Brad, Frank, Ryder. So so practice things like that, just like you would have in the hill. Sit. Give. Just like you would have in the um, hunting environment, because you know if I'm hollering down there at you while you're calling, you're cranking on the call. You don't, you don't see it, and I'm like, Chad, you know, or you holler back at me because I'm cranking on the call. And um, when we holler, Ryder takes off. The next guy right here next to me, he shoots, Ryder cuts across because our bird landed over here at, you know, three o'clock, we got bad problems. So you really wanna make sure, go above and beyond on your training and make sure that he's gonna only go on his name. Frank, Chad, Johnny, See how he backed up to me because that's what I've been teaching him. Back up in that mutt hut, that dog blind where he where he can't get shot. That's awesome. Ryder. That a boy. Good job. Here. <laughs> Here. Sit. It's just as cool as it gets.